after the big Kumon blow up and after the subsequent television bonding, my son started 10th grade in a much better place. And um, we did some college touring and we got along. I mean, our relationship had grown significantly. I, I, I changed as a parent, I did. And I really um, recognized that our relationship was primary and everything else came behind that. And things adjusted to their right place pretty quickly after I realized that. Um, so anyway, on the college tour, my son, we, we saw these great colleges. It was a wonderful, cherished time for us. But he quickly realized why I had been pushing him so hard for all these years, because every one of his favorite schools, he had about a so-so chance of getting into, which was a little scary and depressing. Um, but he came home from Kumon, he came home from the college tour, and at the end of that school year, he said to me, Mom, I want to do Kumon. So now a year after the blow up, I've got a kid who says to me, I want to do Kumon. He said he wanted to brush up for his, for his calculus class the following year. And um, oh, I was so proud of myself. And um, he had a summer, <laughs> he had a summer internship. It was his first um, real job working for the New York Yankees. He felt very grown up and um, impressed with himself. And we went back to the Kumon Center and we saw Jennifer, the lovely center owner, and she welcomed him with open arms and she treated him like a mature kid that he wanted to be treated like, even though, I don't know if you can see, he's um, sitting on those cute little itty bitty chairs that <laughs> shot. <laughs> but, you know, she accommodated him in the sense that, um, you know, he couldn't make the schedule. And so she would meet him before he had to go to work. And she would give him the worksheets and she would answer a few of his questions. And he would take his worksheets and put them in his Kumon pouch. And I would sit out front feeling so good about myself that I had, you know, gotten this kid to this place. And then I would drive him to the train station where he would get on the train with all the commuters, the grown ups, and his little Kumon pouch. And, um, <laughs> And he would go to his job at the Yankees. And every day, I would pick him up from the train station at the end of the day, and I would say, you know, how is work? And he'd say, great. And I'd go, how is Kumon? And he'd go, oh, it's great, Mom. It's going really well. And I'd go, well, where are the worksheets? And he would always say the same thing. He'd go, oh, they're in my desk at the office. I'll bring them home tomorrow. And I was like, OK. <laughs> so this went on all summer. I was writing the book by this point. And um, it was about the middle of August, and I, um, now I was getting concerned that I didn't see these worksheets. Like, why wasn't he turning them back into Jennifer? She's trying to treat him like a mature kid, I guess not pressuring him for those worksheets. And every day I was becoming more concerned, and on the fr final day, I picked him up from the train station, and I said, you know, where are the worksheets? And he goes, oh, I left them at the office again. And, you know, I was very angry. But I was also very busy and very distracted, and I was in the middle of the book. And so I went home, and I forgot about it for a little while. And I worked on the book. And you know, kids depend on you being distracted, teenagers anyway. And so he took that opportunity to go out with his friends. And um, he went out, and it was a few hours later, and I got that funny, like, nagging sensation, like there was a lie. And I didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew there was a lie around. And so I called him, and I said, Ethan, come home now. And he was with his friends, and I must have had that, you know, moms on the warpath sound in my voice, because he came home right away. And I still remember his face when he opened up the door. And it was somewhere in between, like, self-righteous indignation, like, you know, how dare you make me come home after all the Kumon I did all summer? And, you know, I'm in big trouble right now. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, Ethan, I said, where are your worksheets? And he goes, they're in, they're in the office, they're in my desk at, at work. And I said, Ethan, I want to see the worksheets now. And he looked at me and he repeated his answer. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to drive you back on a Friday night and we're going to go through your desk together. But I'm going to get to the bottom of those worksheets. But before I did that, I said, uh, first I'm going to go search your room. And I ran upstairs. This is not one of my finer moments as a mother. And he's running after me. And um, he's going, you know, <laughs> 
don't, you, you're not allowed to search my room, you can't go in my room. And I'm like, yes I can, I'm your mother and I'm going to do that now. And it took all of about 30 seconds for me to find the worksheets in a backpack, stuffed in a backpack, undone. The whole summer's worth of worksheets that I'd been driving them back and forth for, I'm feeling so proud of, uh, were stuffed in, a, it, was, it was all a ruse, okay? And I was furious. So um, <clears throat> I was so furious that apparently I came up with a punishment that was worse than anyone has ever heard of, according to my son, in their entire lives. I said, um, I, first of all, I took away his phone, I took away his computer, and I said that he had to sit next to me for three weeks, there were three weeks until school started, I had to write the book, I, know there was, I knew there was no way I could focus on the book if a piece of my mind was worried about whether he was lying to me, and the only way I could be sure he wasn't lying to me was to have him sit right next to me, and I said, you're gonna finish those Kumon worksheets, and when you're done, we're gonna go back and we're gonna get more. And, <laughs> and it took about three days into this, t into this punishment for Ethan to start seeming like he was liking sitting next to me. You know, I didn't realize what I'd done, but I had created this void. Uh, you know, there was no friends, there was no technology, there was just me and Kumon. And it took, <laughs> it took, you know, and at the end of every day, we would eat dinner together, and then we would watch a couple episodes of a funny TV show, and uh, three days in, like, he actually started to seem like he was liking hanging out with me. And, and, you know, when we look back on that summer, it was actually, you know, it was a sweet time. And I think even he would tell you that it was a sweet time. You know, so what I came to realize, first of all, I have no doubt that Ethan had good intentions when he asked me at the beginning of that summer to go back and do Kumon. And I also, you know, by that point he valued my opinion and I valued Kumon. So we were there. But he was also a kid and he was also immature and um, didn't realize the full implications and he probably got into the lie and it was a little beyond his control by that point. And, um, you know, what I've come to realize is that we're all more than a product of our actions and that a kid who does bad things and behaves badly is not a bad kid and that they want to get back in line and in fact they can get back in line very quickly and that we need to nurture their desire to be good and help them bring that desire to fruition and try not to focus so much on the relation, the behavior, and rather focus on the relationship. So that's Ethan today, or, you know, a couple months ago. Um, thank you. <laughs> So Ethan finished doing Kumon that